Okay, I'm back after more than a week working with the Arc Studio, and here is my conclusion. This is the Arc Studio Room Correction System by IK Multimedia. And the cool thing about this one is that you don't need any plugin to work with it. So that caught my attention. And if this guy works well, it actually can be a game changer for the home studio. So I have installed the ARC 4 software on my computer. I'm gonna do a room measurement using this microphone, which is a calibration microphone included with the ARC Studio system. And we'll see if this guy can hold up to the task. I'm just gonna give a shout out to IK Multimedia who sent me the Arc Studio, but all opinions are mine and IK Multimedia doesn't have a say in the content of my video. So if you don't know what a room correction system does, it actually analyzes and measure the frequency response of your room and your speakers and creates a profile you use to get a flatter response from your speakers. But in my book, the number one thing to do is to work your room acoustics with acoustic material and then fine tune with a room correction software or system. So the ARC Studio comes with this piece of hardware, which makes it different from what's available out there because usually a room correction system that is based on hardware can cost thousands of dollars. And the ARC Studio comes out at 299 US dollars, which is very affordable. But again, does it work well? So it comes with a USB-C cable, a power supply, of course, and also this measurement microphone to do the room measurements. All right, so ARC microphone is ready to go. I'm gonna plug it in. Important thing is to use a mic stand to do the measurements. The simple reason is I'm gonna need, and you'll see it right away if I click on next, Select my microphone. Make sure the microphone is well connected to the sound interface. Okay, I'm gonna have a choice of different listening areas. Okay, so there's the project studio, there's the studio monitor spot, the wide area, back area, and the movie studio home theater. I'm gonna leave it to monitor spot, which is basically what I have on my side. Click on next, and there you go. So that's why it's important to use a mic stand because you're gonna to need to measure the ear level height, okay? And place your microphone accordingly to that height, okay? And on my end, 46 inches is what I'm going for. And then I'm gonna click on next, play a test. Perfect. Next again. Okay, now I have uh, a choice between the quick mode or the advanced mode. Okay, I'm gonna click advanced. I wanna get the maximum of measuring points possible. Click on next. Okay, so it says the room analysis will help you in measuring seven points taken at three different height layers for a total of 21 points. So basically uh, a set of sets measurement points will be taken six inches below ear level. Okay, and then some measurements at ear level and some measurements six inches above ear level. So let's start with measurement layer one. Oh yeah, and by the way, you don't need to have the Arc Studio hardware connected. It needs to be turned off. Okay, then I'm gonna need to place that uh, at the other location okay this is a bit tricky there's no way the system knows where your microphone is so it doesn't kind of uh, follow the microphone over to the next measurement point so you just need to kind of figure it out yourself according to this picture and place the microphone accordingly from what i know is that the algorithm that they use is actually designed this way, so it shouldn't be a huge problem. Okay, so I'm gonna move on and take all the measurements. At the back of the device, we have a pair of XLR outputs and inputs, and also the USB-C connection to connect to the computer. On my side, the signal comes out of my audio interface, straight into the ARC studio, which then goes into my RAM 1000, which is my monitor controller. 
Now the room measurement is done. This is the result of the measurements that I just took. Now I have a bump at around 150 Hertz, which is a bit normal considering the fact that I'm set up in a small size room. Now I'm rebuilding all of my panels into proper panels and I'm gonna have the chance to fix that up a bit on my next measurements once my new panels are up and running. Okay, so this is in process right now. Now from this point, I can edit uh, that measurement. If I click on edit on top, I have some EQ points that I can use to customize uh, my listening experience if I want to. I have different types of targets I can choose from. Uh, the default one has a bit of a bump in the low end, which is fine. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it at flat. Or I can even, you know, go in between and just increase a bit of the low and if I want to and create myself a custom a custom target but I'm gonna leave that at flat and then I have like different correction types the default one I have the sharp and as you can see there's the after measurement which is in yellow let me just uh, remove the initial uh, measurement and this is what I have after correction okay uh, so this is the sharp that's the default and that is the broad correction type so basically, it's the intensity of the correction. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at default. I think that sounds pretty good and natural at the same time. Now, the thing that I don't have on this software is a mix knob, which I would like to, uh, to have, honestly. But the correction type will actually achieve sort of, of the same thing. I would use a mix knob to reduce the intensity of the correction. But here I have like two different choices to work with so for now i'm good with that but a mix knob would have been cool there's also a low range and a high range which is going to bypass the correction for that range if i want to so we have on top a two phase option the natural and linear and this is to ensure a good stereo image so natural mode will improve the phase response while linear will maintain the existing phase response okay so we try it out that depends on the room you work with. Now, the cool thing is this, and this is when the Arc Studio comes in play. Once it's connected and installed on your computer, on the top of the Arc 4 software, you will see your Arc Studio hardware listed. You select it. From this point, once you're good with the measurements and you're good with your edits or whatever you did, on the edit side, you just click on Store and it's gonna sync to the hardware. And this is where the magic happens. From this point on, I can close the Arc 4 software from my computer and only use the Arc Studio box. And that's it. That's all I have to do to activate or deactivate my room correction, which is great. So I don't need to install a plugin in Cubase while I'm mixing. I don't need to use a software on my computer to be used as an audio driver to make the room correction. No, everything goes to that box and the box has my measurement profile loaded. So the only thing I need to do is to make sure that this light is on, the correction light is on, and I'm good to go. If I wanna bypass the correction, uh, let's say when I'm mixing on headphones and I don't need any room correction for my headphones, I just turn that off and that's it. I wanna bring the correction back when I'm using speakers, that's it. That's all I need to do. And this is super practical. Now I paid attention on a few details. I want to make sure that it didn't alter the audio quality going into the box. And from what I can hear, it's super clean. It's a very clean signal. It doesn't generate any types of artifacts or uh, noise or you know anything like that. The audio coming out of that box is ultra clean. And that is something very important if I'm gonna start working with this guy, you know? I just wanna get back to the software and show you one little thing here. Uh, the virtual monitoring, which is quite nice. This will give you access to different types of uh, studio monitors you can monitor through, uh, or even like uh, home systems, uh, a smartphone. So when selecting smartphone, I'm gonna have this frequency response. Uh, same for a 49 inch TV. You know, and even a bunch of studio monitors, like let's say the white 80s, I'm pretty sure this is the equivalent of 
the NS10. So I can load that profile if I want to check my mixes on a NS10 type of monitors. Some of you will ask me about headphone measurements. It's not going to do it. It only focuses on the room and your studio monitors. Okay, I'm back after more than a week working with the ARC Studio. And here is my conclusion. I'm switching. I'm gonna start using the ARC Studio system for my room correction. Yeah, you heard that right. Okay, I'm honest with you. It does work very well. As far as the sound goes, I'm not in the different ballpark than what I'm used to. So my listening experience is pretty much the same a part that I feel that it sounds a bit more natural, which I like a lot. But the game changer, as far as I'm concerned, is the box. You know, like managing everything through the hardware without even having to connect the hardware to my computer when I use room correction is just stunning. Okay, that works very well, especially for the price because usually room correction hardware is very expensive we're talking about thousands of dollars okay it might not be the same uh, quality on components maybe i'm comparing apples to oranges but to have a room correction system managed by a piece of hardware at this price range uh, for me is a game changer so it's so convenient for my workflow no need to load a plugin in my daw no need to load an audio driver on my computer system. Everything is done inside the box. So that was it for me because my number one requirement was the sound quality. It had to sound at least the same or better to what I'm used to. And it passed the test, no problem. So then the box made everything. Now, the only thing I was a bit skeptical is when I was doing the room measurements. And what was a bit confusing for me is to get close to the suggested measuring points that I saw on the software because there was no way for the software to follow you around, to follow the microphone around while making the measurements. But when I open my measurement profile and start to listen to mixes and music uh, through the ARC studio, I said, okay, that, that is working. <laughs> that works very well. That sounds very good. So it does take those measurements well enough <laughs> to give me amazing results. And in the end, the end result is what counts. So let me know if you use any room correction for your speakers or headphones. And if you would use a system like the ARC Studio, leave your questions and comments down below. Take care, my friend, and see you next time.